right now? No, I'm fine, Mike. Our right, jam. Watch this. <laughs>
Good morning. Good morning. Oh, he wants to fly. He wants to fly. Strap this thing on, huh? Watch your step. Watch your step. I got it. is necessary and cabin visibility is reduced, aisle path lighting will illuminate. A change in color or an exit sign Not will yet. indicate you have reached an exit. All doors except those Here located we go. just after the wings are equipped with slide wraps. The doors just after the wings are equipped with slides. The window exits are equipped with ramps and off-wing slides. All slide wraps may be detached and used as flotation devices. Additionally, this aircraft is equipped with two inflatable life rafts. One is located in the ceiling compartment at the overwing exits, and the other is in a ceiling compartment at the doors just after the wings. Your life vest is located in a container beneath or in some cases between each seat. Pull on the fabric strap to release the life vest pouch. Tear open the pouch. Place the vest over your head. Wrap the belt around your waist. Secure the buckle and tighten by pulling on the loose end of the belt. Inflate just prior to exiting the aircraft by pulling the red tabs or manually blowing into the tubes at shoulder level. If we experience a decrease in cabin pressure, oxygen masks will appear from a compartment above your seat. Reach up and pull the mask towards you to start the flow of oxygen. Place well, the mask you about your nose you got it there, okay. Tighten the elastic band yeah. around mm -hmm. your head by pulling on either side and breathe normally. The what? No oxygen is flowing, the plastic bag may not inflate. Remember to put your mask on first before assisting other customers. Smoking is prohibited on this aircraft. All lavatories are equipped with smoke detection systems, and federal law prohibits tampering with, disabling, or destroying these systems. Mobile phones may be used while the main cabin door is open. When it is closed, your phone must be turned off for the duration of the flight and remain off until instructed by a crew member after landing. All electronic devices must be off all crew member instructions and observe all. And it's not that what she's saying isn't important, but what I have to say is a little bit more important. We have the um, highest salute that can be paid to any military service personnel. We have our water cannon salute. So if you look outside on either side of the aircraft, you'll see a bright yellow fire truck. And no, it's not for a bad thing. Don't, don't anybody go for the exit. This is our water cannon salute. We're going to have the cleanest airplane that gets into Dallas this morning. So there, this is their salute, and we salute you too for all your years of service. Thank you. ask a flight attendant. Thank you. <laughs> we won't let you bring your nail clippers or your pocket knife, but I can get on here and you'll hand me a knife. I see. That makes sense. But I want to see it. 
Should we just take it off and down the side? That is awesome. We can serve a coffee. They didn't start, got it? Right. Oh, okay, I see what they're going to do.
part of this, or are we doing this? Uh, I mean, yeah, here you are. What is, what, what is just falling behind him. Mark, just falling behind him. Okay, just keep it behind us if you could. Keep coming on, you're alright. Tell me if I You're fine. Start cutting the wristway? Straight back. Looks good. Put it a little wider or not? Big feet in the way, don't worry about it. We're about halfway there. Head over this way just a little bit, hon. Starting to, there we go. Keep coming. You're all right. There you go. foot. You've got to make uphill now.
Almost there. Keep coming. Just keep coming back. Okay, you're there, Jeff. Okay, come back this way and get them set. You can set it up on the wall. Just put it up on the wall. Sorry? Yeah. Put, put it up on the wall. Back with a salute. Okay, let's get a Okay, you got him? Okay, let's look over toward the flag. Snap a salute on three. One, two, three. Hold it, hold it. Okay. You got it? Okay. Do it one more time. One, two, three, and hold it. Okay. We're going to get y'all to stay there. We're going to get a salute right there. One more front. salute right there. Oh, he wants one more salute. Stand by. Right. Two. Right. Yeah. That could be a good one. One more. Move in, move in. Move in, spray, yeah. come in, spray right this way. There Pull you go. Head back a little bit there. Chad, if you didn't. Are you getting this? Okay. Are you able to get there? Can you see the text? Yes. Good. Yes. Look at here, guys. Okay. Wait. Oh. 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 Here we go. That's a good one. Yes, ma'am, you're fine, right there. Well, hang on, get your fingernails in here. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay.
Go wide, go wide. Real wide. Well, Tom's looking for somebody to bring to this location because we yeah. can get a nice shot left in the background as you see. Look at the flag. It's all wrapped around the... You want three? Count to five for me, Jack. Count to five. Just count to five. Count to five. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, five. Got it. Is that good? Okay. It is. Okay. Jack, you were in the airport. This hold is on, Jack, hold this on. Is Jack. Oh, oh, wait for speed. Stand where you're at. 
just gonna stay there. That's what I want. Speed. And it's Jack Curry from Brian. Jack, you're in the Air Force, I know, but you said that uh, in your time uh, during the war in the Pacific, you spent some time at Iwo Jima. Talk about that. Yeah, I used to be in a rescue outfit from a uh, station in Japan, and we divided our time between Iwo Jima, Korea, and Japan, a week in each place on a rotational basis. And uh, as I was telling somebody a while ago, I climbed Iwo, uh, climbed Suribachi several times, and it didn't look like the way it looks here, but uh, it is a, a very, uh, I should say, a historical place as far as the Marines go. Right. And uh, I enjoyed my time on Evo. It was uh, very pleasant. Temperature and so forth. Right. I got to go swimming down there all the time. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful black sand. I've often heard that. This is the first time that you've seen the memorial here in Washington, D.C. What's your impression of it? Well, I think it's very uh, a beautiful thing as far as the way it's been, uh, presented here. But, uh, it doesn't exactly look like the mountain that I saw. What are your thoughts about today and the experience that you and your fellow veterans have had today here in Washington? Well, we've had a fabulous time. Of course, it was pretty much condensed, you know, but uh, we've enjoyed every bit of it. And I appreciate this honors tour. Very good. Thanks for coming this way. If you want to. You want to shoot me beer over anything? You got everything? Oh no, I can always. Need, I always need tons more beer. But if you're going to wait for me, if you want to just stand here. Well. Ken was a Navy corpsman. He's carrying a carbine. That's what we carried. We were told by a regimental commanding officer when we got in, get rid of the sidearm. Get a, uh, somebody don't need his carbine anymore. Take it in his ammo belt. That's what we would do. The officers did the same thing because of it. otherwise you were a target for a sniper. He's got his carbine that packed on the, on his back is plasma that he would use. This particular corpsman, the report on it was he was killed in action two days after this happened. How, how do you feel coming back here and looking at the monument? Well, I wasn't that evil, so, you know, I was at Oklahoma. But, okay. but uh, knowing, you know, what was going on, uh, I was still stateside then. I was at Oklahoma Naval Hospital in Oakland. We were getting the wounded from evil. They were flying them into Alameda Naval Air Station. And they have planes with stretchers on them. We'd we'll fly them into Alameda. We'd take a convoy of ambulances, go down, pick them up, bring them on up to the hospital. And uh, I was I was working on a ward that had the guys that were paralyzed from the neck down, completely paralyzed from the neck down. What's your name? Ira Irvin. Ira. I R A I R V I N. Where are you from? Brian. Brian. Okay. Yeah, they. Uh, we were getting them, and then I went from there to Camp Pendleton for field training to have them in that But that's what we would know, we would carry the plasma with us, so we would use when we could. We couldn't always use it. The way we would do it, uh, after we got through trying to do it, we could with his wounds. Uh, he'd take his rifle, put his bayonet on, stick it in the ground, hang it up over the butt of the rifle, and get it into his arm and start it going. Give him a half grain of, of morphine and put a tag on him and leave him. Uh, 
they could get there with stretchers, they'd get him, but that was very, they weren't too successful doing that. We tell the walking wounded, going back to battalion aid station, you see somebody like that, pick them up and carry them. They would. And uh, to get them to a battalion aid station. We had help there for a while, the hospital ship, the Mercy, was uh, out off Okinawa until the Kamikazes started in. They got her out of there in a hurry. And the white ship of the Red Cross was a bullseye for a Kamikaze. So that kind of set things back, some for the doctors, but uh, the battalion aid station. Here, watch MASH, that's what a battalion aid station was like. The nurses there, some other foreman, doctors. That's what he was. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, I just thought, yeah. Oh, 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 ye